Hi guys, I am absolutely thrilled to report it is a cool, rainy, gloomy day here in the end times in the reborn paradise of the Green Mountains in Vermont heading to a sweltering 74 degrees today. Hallelujah. On Friday, July 6, 2018. So Friday is a time that I uh, celebrate. That's not exactly the right word. Uh, anyway, Friday is when I bring you my usually two-part ecological meltdown roundup rant where I simply go on the pages of them, open up my email box to see how this planet is heading directly into a brick wall at 67,000 miles this week. Well, since it's a holiday week, a little bit skinny this week, so I am just going to make a, just lump it all together into one roundup, and we're going to start off over uh, with my, with my friends at mongabay.com with Rhett Butler and the boys. A little bit slim pickings, as I say because of the holiday. So let's just dive right into it. I already mentioned this story on the mainstream media. Uh, Lab-grown embryos raise hope. Raise hope for saving nearly extinct rhino. Okay. They like this word hope. <coughs> After logging activist hope, hope to extend protections for Poland's Bialoisa forest. Okay. Let's see. According to Environ them environmentalists, loggers cut 190,000 cubic meters of wood in 2017. That amounts to around 160,000 to 18,000 trees. Uh, there you go. In May, Europe's highest court ruled the logging illegal noting that the government's own documents show that logging was a bigger threat than the beetles they were supposedly fighting. There you go. Okay, I just did a, uh, a good news roundup rant uh, cheering on that pride of lions who ate those uh, goddamn rhino poachers over there in uh, South Africa yesterday and in that article it was talking about not only using attack lions to fight poaching but uh, a, a new trend that they're talking about here in that article too they mentioned it uh, and fight against rhino poachers India and Africa lets the dogs out uh, as they're now uh, using attack dogs, attack dogs to fight these motherfuckers. There you go. Uh, here we go. Let's go down there to the shithole country of Brazil, where in the Cerrado, traditional communities win back their land from agribusness firm. Oh, come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That ain't bullshit. Uh, anyway, let's see, moving on. <clears throat> New research calculates the full carbon cost of oil palm cultivation in Indonesia's forest. So, what are the numbers? Researchers found that each hectare, that's each two and a half acres of rainforest, converted to oil palm monoculture creates 100 
74 tons of carbon emissions, most of which will find their way into the atmosphere and contribute to global climate change. And after the oil palm is harvested, the amount of biomass returned to the soil to feed living organisms underground is 90% lower than in a functional, healthy rainforest. No shit, Sherlock. Do you think so? Uh, research team said that these new findings show that figures used by bodies like the IPCC and the RSPO talking about sustainable palm oil to calculate the carbon cost of oil palm cultivation should be updated. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, as long as we're over there in the oil palm plantations, how many times have we heard this headline? Orangutan fought, found shot and hacked to death at palm oil plantation with history of orangutan deaths. <clears throat> an orangutan previously captured from an oil palm plantation in Borneo and released into a nearby national park has now been found dead inside the plantation with extensive bullet and knife wounds. This is the third orangutan killing being investigated this year at the plantation. Uh, yes, the company says it has made efforts to protect wildlife entering its plantation. Warning, some photos may be disturbing or graphic. All right, from orangutans and, uh, and rhinos to elephants, two suspected poachers arrested for killing Sumatran elephant. Should I go here or not? We have the snowflakes and the buttercups infecting Manga Bay. I'm not going to get off on a snowflake and buttercup rant to insult my intelligence and yours, so I'd better move it on. All right, let's go over there to New Guinea. Tensions mount at Papua New Guinea gas project as landowners threaten to close the plant for good. Yes, this is the latest news about these protesters setting fire to this Exxon Mobil PNG LNG, uh, PNG LNG project in the New Guinea Highlands. All right, maybe we can have some good news here to celebrate. Uh, now they're turning to fingerprint technology in the fight against pangolin poachers. Go back to the shithole country of Sumatra. In Sumatra, villagers blame a coal mine for cracks in their houses and their community. Uh-huh, I bet. Uh, mainly their cracks in their community as some area residents support the mine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, what's going on in these shitholes 
city of New Delhi, India. We see uh, protesters coming out to protest against the proposed felling of more than 16,000 trees to build housing for government officials. Delhi is among the world's most polluted cities. La -da -da. What's going on with the frog pandemic this week? Global frog pandemic may become even deadlier as strains combine. Oh, shit. Jesus. A uh, new study finds that hybridization between these different strains of this frog-killing disease uh, and the one that's already caused the global pandemic killing all of these frogs can lead to yet greater infection rates and illness strength than either can alone. Re the researchers say that their results indicate frogs may face a future even more dire than anticipated. Oh, shit. So I guess this counts as the more dire than previously believed story of the week. Uh, Let's see. Saving the Rainforest 2.0. Huh. Let's see. The report released last week as hundreds of policymakers and conservation meet at the Oslo Tropical Forest for Forum. Identifies key barriers to stopping the destruction of the world's forest. Yep, yep. Here is how a new smartphone app is helping indigenous communities fight deforestation. Yes. Uh, I've already covered this one. This is just their latest spin on this story. Riddle. What is worse than palm oil for the environment? Other vegetable oils. Yes. Uh, we've already been over the story uh, that this is one of those frying pan or the fire choices. Uh, we give up palm oil and <coughs> there's all these other vegetable oils ready to destroy the planet. Oh God. Uh, here is chocolate as chocolate as a conservation strategy. Oh God. Let's see. Here is, wow, <clears throat> CO2 levels altering rainfall patterns across the tropics. Oh shit, Sherlock. Yes. Uh, anyway, that's just a roundup of that. A most unlikely hope. A most unlikely hope. How the companies that destroyed the world's rainforest can now save them. We have come to a pretty sorry pass if we are depending in significant measure on 
these corporations to get us out of the very mess they created. But this is the pass we're at. And there is actually reason to hope that the same global corporations that got us into this mess can now get us out. Yes, in this commentary, Mighty Earth CEO Glenn Hurwitz writes that he feels confident these companies can make a difference, but Rhett, as he always does, this post is a commentary. The views expressed here are those of the author, not necessarily those of Manga Bay. Oh, shit. Yes, and we're going to end up in the Belize Barrier Reef talking about this horse shit story. Belize Barrier Reef gets UNESCO upgrade. Yes, laughing at this story about how the UN uh, has announced that the Belize Barrier Reef has been removed from its list of sites in danger. All right, but as I say, I'm just going to lump this all into one rant over to uh, Center for Biological Diversity's Endangered Earth. Uh, we've already been over most of these stories, but it never hurts to uh, repeat it. <clears throat> Trump to allow killing of red wolves as few as 30 remain. North Carolina's wild red wolves are among the world's most endangered species. We, we just read this story last week. Uh, anyway, the Trump administration is declaring open season on America's Last Red Wolves. Oh, shit, Sherlock. I guess they're uh, just recycling some stories because we already heard this one about UNESCO lets down vaquitas struggling for survival. We just heard less than 30 red wolves and now with less than 30 vaquitas remaining UNESCO has postponed uh, their decision to designate uh, vaquitas as an endangered species, uh, which is not exactly uh, the Endangered Species Act. What is going on with the Endangered Species Act on the 4th of July? A new bill to gut the Endangered Species Act. Oh, shit, Sherlock. Attacks on the Endangered Species Act keep on coming fast and furious. This week, Senator John Barrasso, Republican from Wyoming, introduced a sweeping bill to gut protections for the nation's most imperiled species by giving state govern governors who often oppose such protections, the power to veto scientific decisions and sharply curtail citizens' power to fight for vanishing wildlife in court. So far, this Congress, Republicans have launched more than 90 attacks on the Endangered Species Act. Yes, uh, let's see, we just talked about the red wolf. Now let's wrap up with the yellow-billed cuckoo as Trump moves to strip safeguards for rare songbird. Oh, shit, Sherlock. The yellow-billed cuckoos have already been devastated by loss of habitat to dams, livestock grazing, 
mining and development and their numbers are still dropping. Ignoring all of this, the Trump administration has just announced it hopes to strip away the Birds Endangered Species Act protection. Quoting the Center's Michael Robinson, the last thing yellow-billed cuckoos need is to lose their federal protection. The Trump administration should protect their nesting grounds, not abandon them to polluters. But we're going to wind up with those eco-Nazis over there at the Washington Post. But since this roundup was rounded up right before Scott Pruitt announced his resignation, there's really nothing to say in this roundup because pretty much for the past six months, about 90% of the Washington Post environmental reporting has been about how Scott Pruitt is the biggest threat to the environment on the planet. So all of these stories have now, like, oops, so now they can turn their attention to Ryan Zinke. The Washington Post can now turn their hatchet to Ryan Zinke, I guess. But anyway, do they have anything other than Scott Pruitt news that is no news? Here is the mysterious disappearance of the phrase climate change from a CDC website. Oh shit, Sherlock. And we got some Scott Pruitt stuff, Scott Pruitt stuff, Scott Pruitt stuff. I've mentioned this one in the mainstream media, I guess it bears repeating. Trump presses Saudis to increase oil production in face of rising gas prices. President Trump has asked the Saudi king to crank up oil production by as much as two million barrels per day. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, I guess this is Donald Trump protecting those good American jobs. Okay, here is a Ryan Zinke uh, hatchet job story uh, to round out this rant. Uh, Inspector General will review Ryan Zinke's involvement in a land deal backed by Halliburton's chairman. We will see where that review goes. It will go nowhere, but maybe uh, the Washington Post can get busy turning their hatchets on Ryan Zinke so we can have more good news here in the new, near future. Anyway, for this version of this week's Ecological Meltdown Roundup rant, smoke them if you got them, and get out there and enjoy, if you live in New England, get out there and enjoy this absolutely spectacularly gorgeous weather. Coming in right now. Bye, guys. I hear a squirrely like that. Go get that squirrely.